The 2024-25 med school application cycle is finally over, so I want to share my timeline and the med schools that I got accepted at. I did not expect it to be this long and unpredictable, so I want to share with you my timeline along with my stats and where I got accepted so that you guys have an idea of what to expect if you're applying soon. I submitted my primary to 27 medical schools and my highest MCAT was a 517. My cumulative GPA was a 3.87. My science GPA was basically the same, it was a 3.85. As far as activities, I did fill out all 15 slots. My three most meaningful was being a medical assistant for 1,930 hours, being a EMT volunteer for 268 hours, and then finally being a research assistant for 980 hours. I also volunteered at a surgery department and was a part of a homeless assistance with medicine program, worked during COVID as a saliva tester and part of the vaccination team. I also was a TA for three semesters and tutored middle school students and now tutor for the MCAT. I actually didn't have that much shadowing hours. I shadowed four physicians for a total of 62 hours. And for leadership, I was part of a scholarship board and a student health advisory board. And then the remaining slots were filled with a hobby, uh, posters and presentations I did, and scholarships and grants I received. Now for my school list. For reference, I went to a large public university in Colorado, so all the schools I applied to are technically out of state for me. I used MSAR and admit.org to create my school list. And the first step, I did filter out schools that had too high of an MCAT and also lower end as well. Then I looked at acceptance data. I looked at percentage of interviews given to out of state students and percent that actually matriculate. And that helped me narrow down my school list even more. And I did apply to quite a bit of California schools. It's important to check which schools aren't as friendly to out-of-state students before applying and I would refrain from applying to too many Cali schools that aren't that friendly to out-of-state students. And the final criteria I had was whether I liked the location. So that filtered out a lot of states that I just didn't want to live in or attend school in. It's important to think about where you attend medical school because it can impact where you end up for residency. If you plan to stay in the West Coast, Ideally, attending a medical school in the West Coast can improve your chances versus somewhere in the East Coast. For the primary submission timeline, May 1st is when AMCAS opens. You can't submit anything, but you can fill out all the demographics, the essays for the activities, and your personal statement. And from May 1st to the 28th, that's exactly what I did. I filled out my application so that I could submit it as soon as it was available to submit, which is typically May 28th. So my actual primary submission date was June 2nd. The reason why so many people tell you to apply early or submit early is because when you submit your primary, it takes a couple of weeks for AMCAS to verify all the classes you've taken, to recalculate your GPA, and if you submit later, you're going to be a part of the huge rush of applications that they receive, and it's going to take longer for you to get verified. That verification needs to happen so that your primary application gets sent to medical schools, and they can now send you your secondary application. Remember, medical schools only view your application after you submitted your secondary. And in the month of May, I also electronically submitted submitted my transcript to MCAS with parchment. Make sure you submit that official transcript over to them because that's how they can start verifying your application as soon as you submit it. So by submitting it on June 2nd, I got verified June 26th and June 28th is the first date that MCAS can actually send your application to medical schools. So I was right on time to be in that first batch of applications that gets sent over. Also in June, I scheduled for my CASPER and AA MC preview exam. They're short two-hour ethics situational based exams that some medical schools require. Not all of them require it, so make sure to check which ones do and have that done before the secondaries hit. And when you submit your primary, you don't have to have a finalized school list or all your letters of rec in MCAS. So after I submitted my primary on June 2nd to get verified, I still updated my school list for the entire month of June and one of my letter writers actually submitted their letter in June as well and that doesn't impact your application at all. So now for secondaries, following my early timeline, I received 
three secondaries on the 28th, so three in June, received the bulk of my secondaries in July, 22 in total, and finally received two in August. With secondaries, I try to write and submit them within a two week time frame. That's typically what's considered ideal. And some medical schools will have very strict deadlines. If you don't submit your secondary within two weeks, then they just won't consider your application at all. So it's important to stay organized and be aware of those different deadlines. I highly recommend spending a lot of time on your secondaries because this is the one chance where you can show schools why you're interested in them and why you stand out among all the thousands of applications. And I think people underestimate the amount of work that goes into secondaries. I was not able to just copy and paste my secondaries from one school to the next because even for the generic essay prompts like diversity, each school has a different word count and each school words the question a little bit differently. So it was hard for me to just simply copy paste. I really had to tailor each essay to the school. And I do think that helped me a lot in getting the number of interviews that I got. With almost all my secondaries, I try to emphasize why exactly I would be a good fit for them. So even if they're asking about leadership, I would talk about my experiences being a leader and would relate it to how I would contribute to the school with my experiences that I've had. And I think that really helps you write a secondary that stands out among the many applicants. So month of July was all spent doing secondaries. And then in August is when I started receiving my first interview invites. So I received two interview invites in August, three in September, one in November and one in December. And with the invite, they give you a couple of dates where you can schedule your interview. And typically those interviews were scheduled a month out from when they sent that interview invite. So I did my first actual interview in September. And my last one was in January. Some tips for interview, provide specific examples and stories with your answer. It gives you more depth and helps you solidify your reason for wanting to go into medicine or attending that school. Most applicants, they get really nervous and they want to sound smart. And I think that actually backfires keep yourself calm, treat it like a conversation. One of the biggest tips I have is at the end of the interview, they will ask you if you have any questions for them. Treat that time like a conversation. If the interviewer made a comment that interested you during the actual interview, bring up that comment during that question phase and ask questions about the interviewer. A lot of applicants forget that they're being interviewed by a person, someone who also has a life story. It's important to relate and connect with the interviewer through an actual conversation instead of just question, answer, question, answer. So I had five traditional open file interviews and two MMI interviews. Personally, I like the traditional open file interview because it just feels more natural. Open file means the interviewers have your application in front of them and they can ask specific questions based on the activities you did or your personal statement. Closed file means they have no access to your application and learning about you for the first time. MMI is an ethics-based interview. There are typically eight station and they last around eight minutes and each station you have a different interviewer and a different prompt you have eight minutes to talk about the prompt i thought all eight of those stations would be based on specific situation ethical situation for both of my interviewers at least one or two of the stations were personal questions so they would ask tell me about yourself um, at one of those stations and for those eight minutes it did feel like a regular interview and not an MMI. So finally for acceptances, there are rolling admissions and decisions that come out on a fixed date. So for the schools with rolling admissions, I got my first acceptance in October from Ohio State. My second was from UC Irvine in November and my last acceptance came from UCLA in February. The other four schools I did get waitlisted at. All three of these schools host acceptance students day where you can go and learn more about the school. So currently that's what I'm in the process of doing, basically seeing where I would fit in the most at. If you're interested in reading how I wrote my activities, essays, and my personal statement, I do have my full application on my website. I also have an AMCAS timeline and guide for the 2025-26 application cycle. It contains all the dates for the upcoming cycle, including CASPER dates, AAMC preview dates, primary and secondary submission dates. Everything in there is meant to keep you on track and allow you to apply early so that you can maximize your chances of getting the most interviews and hopefully more acceptances. 
I realized I forgot to include all my rejections. There's a lot, so here is a quick overview of all the schools. Thanks so much for watching, and I'm actually really active on TikTok. I post MCAT advice and application advice almost daily.